Welcome back to another video. My name is Derek. Today we're going to take a look at BoardView software, specifically JC Drawing. So let's get into the video. This video is going to basically cover the basics to looking at the board view software. We're not going to get into schematics quite yet, but looking at the board view, it, it can appear quite daunting at the beginning and learning how to navigate through it can take some time. Hopefully this video will help you get a general understanding of how to start looking at it and how to start finding and navigating your way around so that as you start to troubleshoot issues with motherboards, whether it's a short or a failing component, you'll have a better time navigating. So let's get started. All right, so here I'm in GC Drawing and we're taking a look real quick at just one of the free series. This is the iPhone 13 Pro Max motherboard and you can see that we've got all of the layers. We've got the top layer, the bottom of the top, the bottom layer, and then the bottom of the motherboard. And a few things that we will get to in future videos are gonna be things like the voltage, the resistance, for now, what we'll do is I'm just going to leave it on the preset settings and we're going to dive into the motherboard a little bit. Now, one of the cool things about Mobile Centrix is under the board components, if you go to the interactive view, you'll see the iPhone 13 Pro Max, for example. There's other models that it is, but you'll be able to take a look at the individual components that we sell on the actual board itself. You can also search for them, the connectors, <laughs> different chips. It won't have everything like all of the individual capacitors, coils, resistors, but the main components that need to be replaced on a frequent basis, we, we will have. So when you're searching around and you find an issue and you're able to trace it back to a specific component, you'll be able to look at that component, jump on over to the website, select it, and there you go. You, you know you have to order yourself one of the uh, big power ICs, for example, or the camera IC because you're having an issue with the camera and you've traced it back to this component. One of the really cool things about the actual software itself is you'll be able to actually say, you'll be able to actually see the traces and vias that go off of these components. For example, if I click here down at the bottom, this section that says top, you'll see that all of a sudden appears these brown lines. These are typically visible on top of the board. It's slightly discolored between the black, Apple's black kind of top coat. You'll actually be able to see these traces run around. You can jump down even further to the ones that are kind of right below that, that tend to connect the top to the mid to the lower. These are also sometimes visible, but typically you have to dig through the top coat to start to see them. You can jump down even further, even further, and eventually what you start to see is this ginormous traffic jam of, of lines that are jumping everywhere, connecting everything. But to clean that up, we're just going to look at some of the components. If we go down, for example, to the battery connector, and we look here, we'll see that it's named PP underscore bat underscore VCC. This is the battery connector, it leads to the a charging IC. This is for, if we look at this particular chip, for example, on Mobile Centric's site, you'll see here it's upside down, but this is the wireless charging IC chip compatible for the iPhone 13 through the 13 Pro Max. And on that actual chip itself, it should say 338S00817. It'll be under one of those little shields I rarely have to replace this component, but it could easily be a component that you need to replace if you're finding a short on this particular line. When you take your multimeter in diode mode and you're not getting a value of 0.391 or something close to that, and you're getting a straight short to ground, then you know that it could potentially be this component. One of the lines that tends to short out on all motherboards is your main power rail. So for example, come over here, and you can see that this line is called VDD main. You can see almost everything here is lit up red. 
A good cluster of that is surrounding the PMIC. And you can tell that this is a power management integrated circuit because of all of the coils that surround it. These are boost lines that come off of it that control different things. Like for example, here's a CPU, a CPU SRAM line. Here's a one, uh, one V6 line, some buck lines that come off of it. Buck zero, buck one, buck seven. And right next to VDD main, you'll find a VDD boost, which is another circuit that tends to fail. The thing is, is when you run into a VDD main short, what you're going to find, and what I like to do, is when I'm testing for a short like this, where it's completely dead, I don't have any access to these components because of the shield here, or, or these because of the shield, but some of these components, like this one, are accessible because they're right next to the connector, so you can dig down and test to see if this is short. If it is, then that means that something on this line is shorting out or something that is connected to it is. And so typically what you do is you split the board and you'd be able to isolate whether or not the short is on this half or this half. Because all you'd have to do is take your multimeter down and probe uh, at any of the components that you've now exposed and see if the short still persists. And then using a power supply, you can inject some voltage into a line and with the assistance of thermal camera, for example, you can find where the heat, you can find where all of that power is going, revealing the short, which is typically going to be in an individual component, capacitor, or potentially something a little bit sneakier, for example, a lot of the time when you have a short, the PMIC heats up, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the PMIC itself is bad. It could be one of the surrounding lines, and it just, hap just so happens that the PMIC takes the heat first because the issue actually resides in, say, the the buck the this this buck this buck line, for example. You could have a capacitor here that shorted out, and you're getting a hot spot on the PMIC. And so instead of pulling the PMIC, you can go around and you can test the individual lines and find, okay, it's actually a specific component that's causing it to go bad. A couple things that we can observe just looking at the board view is whether or not you have a capacitor, a resistor, a diode, a filter, almost always components that have a gray side and a yellow side are going to be capacitors. And almost always components that have both yellow sides are either gonna be resistors or filters. So you can see, for example, here, you've got a capacitor, 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 but you also have this resistor. Coils, on the other hand, for example, tend to have also both yellow sides. And basically what they are is can a coil of, of wire that connects one side to the other. Now there's a little bit more behind that simple explanation of what a coil is. And if you would like to have a detailed explanation as to what a capacitor is versus a filter, a resistor, a diode, let me know in the comments below. So when it comes to board level work, for example, let's say I'm working with a issue that I have with a camera. Okay, I've tested out the original camera is not working. I've tried a replacing camera and it's not working. The next step would be to come down to the camera connector itself. Maybe you're looking at a failed wide angled camera or maybe it's or maybe it's the telephoto camera that's gone bad. What you can do is you can come to the actual connector itself and you can see the values that someone has gone through and painstakingly taken and written down the values that you'd be getting. Now one of the cool buttons you can click on is the resistance one up here. And what that really does is it shows you a little clearer explanation of what's ground, labeled GND, and the highlighted in red and white it's going to be the values that you should be getting in that resistance and diode mode, whether it's an open line itself, ground, or something else. And if you get an odd value, you can trace that back through the components and see if one of the components, for example, has failed. Or 
where that can lead you is to a, a component. For example, if I'm here and this is not reading proper, it's not reading 0.374 or something close, relatively close to that, if I click on this button up here next, it's going to pop me over to the next component in line and then it'll pop me over to the other one. But if I keep hitting it, it'll eventually pop me over to this component right here. If I jump over to the board view side of things and we click on that component, we highlight it, we'll be able to see that this one right here is the camera IC compatible for the iPhone 13 through 13 Pro Max. It's a relatively cheap IC, but it could definitely be the culprit as to why we're having that issue. Now, of course, this doesn't mean that right away you should just go and replace it. You should take the time to diagnose it a little bit further by coming in and testing the surrounding components, maybe even popping them it off it to test the values under it to make sure that you are getting the proper readings. And when you remove it, to see if the issue persists. The same goes for the display or the charging or the charge port or you name it. You can look at the specific component, let's say the connector for the display, and you can go down and you can test each individual line and you can see if they line up. If they don't, there's a good chance that if you trace it down, you're going to find the affected component. We've barely touched the surface of what this program can help you with, but hopefully now you have a general idea of where things begin. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's something that you'd like a better explanation of, comment it down below. Thanks a ton for watching. We'll see you in the next video.